Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game from the Meltwater Champions Chester Finals. It is Magnus Carlsen versus Wesley So and this is their third game. The first two games ended in a draw and this one uh, may or may not have, uh, end, uh, have ended in a draw. Uh, and uh, it's uh, quite a nice one as one player uh, significantly outprepares the other player. So let's see what happened in this one. Uh, Magnus with the white pieces opens with pawn to e4. We have e5 by Wesley, knight to f3, knight to c6 and bishop to b5. Magnus goes for the Rui Lopez. Uh, knight to f6, Wesley replies with the Berlin defense and pawn to d3 now. We have bishop to c5 and now uh, c3 uh, still the most popular idea. Magnus goes for bishop captures on c6 as Magnus, I believe, uh, prepared uh, um, uh, for a very, very specific line. D captures on c6 and now we have castles. Now, for those of you who are maybe new to chess, we often mention that if you capture the pawn on e5, you lose the game. Uh, because queen d4 attacks the knight and threatens checkmate, so you have to give up the knight, and uh, you, you you can just resign here in case um, uh, you, you're seeing this for the first time, or maybe you've just started playing the Berlin. Uh, but here, uh, simply uh, after this d captures on c6, we have castles, and now knight to d7. Now you have to defend the e5 pawn, and you can defend it with queen to e7, knight to d7, bishop to d6, even bishop to g4. Uh, knight to d7 is what Wesley plays, and now pawn to c3. And here, uh, in all the games pretty much that reach this position, you, uh, uh, players just castle here or play bishop to d6, but Wesley plays a5, and it is only a move that Wesley plays. It's been played only once before, and he played it against Anish Giri. Uh, in uh, last year's Magnus Cross and Invitational that Anish won with the white pieces. But in that game, uh, after uh, a5, just d4 was played. But here, uh, Magnus plays bishop to g5. And it, it is now as of move 8 that we have a completely new game. So how does Wesley react to bishop to g5? The queen is attacked. Uh, obviously, you can play uh, bishop to e7 or you can play pawn to f6. You can't really block with the knight because then you no longer have... Uh, uh, the e5 pawn defended. So here, uh, f6, it's a pretty standard move in, in the uh, Berlin defense, so, uh, you know, sh should work in this line as well. Bishop to h4 and the bishop to d6. Now, d4 is coming, so you know that um, the bishop belongs on d6. So pawn to d4, queen to e7, and now knight b to d2. We have pawn to g5, attacking the bishop, bishop g3, and h5. Again, very standard stuff, going after the bishop here, trying to trap it with h4. So Magnus plays a h4, g4 kicks away the knight, and well, you could play knight to e1, Magnus goes for d captures on e5, and this is, since this is a rapid game, you really have to know what you are doing here, uh, perhaps even he had this uh, all uh, maybe figured out a at home, uh, but the uh, point is that if you if you go for the exchange, g captures on f3, e captures on d6, c captures on d6, and knight captures on f3, uh, black is just lost here. It seems like, okay, the material is equal, but the position is just uh, uh, horrendous. Your d6 pawn is hanging, you have to play knight to e5, then knight to d4 is coming, and after something like bishop g4, queen to d2, and there is no way for black to attack the white king, but uh, the black king is in, in a terrible position. At some point you will have to castle queenside and then b4 just wins the game as it uh, most often does. But okay, here after d captures on e5, Wesley just played um, uh, f captures on e5 uh, and he relinquishes control over the g5 square. So now Magnus doesn't have to go back with the knight, he goes knight to g5. And okay, knight to b6. Uh, a4 now, paralyzing the queen side as well. Now, regardless of whether Wesley castles or not, uh, Magnus is preparing pawn to b4. So, bishop to d7 and pawn to b4 now. We have pawn to c5, threatening um, uh, just the capture on b4, but basically asking Magnus to decide whether he wants to capture on a5 or does he want to play something else. So, Magnus does capture, b captures on a5, rook captures on a5, giving Wesley the semi-open a file for his rook, and now queen to b3. And look at this. Uh, Magnus has full control over this diagonal, but Wesley has full control over the a4 pawn. He's attacking it three times and he can capture it. Uh, and what should he capture it with? With the rook or with the bishop? It's a very, very difficult choice. Uh, capturing with the rook is probably a little bit safer, uh, but Wesley goes for bishop captures on a4. He grabs the pawn, and now queen to a2. We have rook to a6, so now the bishop can move. The rook will be defended as long as the rook was on a5. Uh, the bishop uh, had to remain on a4. And now rook f to b1. 
Uh, maybe a bit dangerous to leave the queen uh, on the A file, but this is a rapid game. Magnus will force Wesley to burn time to figure this out. Uh, we have bishop to c6, now shifting the bishop to this diagonal, open, opening up a discovery towards Magnus's queen. Queen to b3, and now bishop back to a4. Magnus repeats, queen to b2, or rather doesn't repeat, he retreats with the queen. And here Wesley should play king to d7. He should play king d7, king to c8, and there the king will be safe, as uh, it's really impossible to dislodge this knight from b6, but instead Wesley played kingside castles, and this is now uh, where things can go terribly wrong for him. Magnus goes knight to c4, and this is the moment where Wesley absolutely must react. Now, uh, it seems like you should not be moving the knight. If you move the knight, then you lose the b7 pawn, but that's exactly what you should do. Here you should capture on c4, and after queen captures on b7, uh, you can play rook f to a8, and now after queen to d5 check, uh, which is how you uh, win back the piece, uh, king to g7, queen captures on c4, and okay, the game uh, continues, and it's a, it, it's a nice position for black. The material is equal, black does have a double c pawn, but it doesn't look like all that much for white. Uh, however, after this knight to c4 move, Wesley played king to h8, and it makes sense at the end of this line, uh, Magnus will not have queen to d5 check, picking uh, picking up the knight on c4, but now Magnus just plays knight to e3, and now he has access to the f5 square, which is... Uh something Wesley should not have allowed. Uh, but interestingly, none of the players actually care about that. Look at this, rook f to a8, Wesley doubles up on the a-file, and now Magnus doesn't go for knight f5, he plays c4, he opens up this diagonal. Uh, we have bishop to c6, now offering trades along the a-file, rook captures on a6, rook captures on a6, and now again Magnus doesn't go for knight to f5, he goes for knight to d5. And here uh, Wesley uh, has the opportunity to take control of this, because this is not uh, the most precise idea, but you have to find a very nice vision to, uh, and that is after knight captures on d5, e captures, you don't move the bishop, you play rook b6. First you trade off everything, and then you move the bishop, for example queen c2, rook captures on b1 with check, queen captures, and now bishop to e8, once you capture on b7, bishop to g6, and the game continues. Uh, it's a very nice position for both for both uh, um, equal material. Uh, Wesley would have the bishop pair. Uh, Magnus would have uh, well, maybe maybe sort of some uh, attacking potential because the black king is a bit more uh, wide in the open than the white king. But uh, all in all, you should be able to defend this. However, after knight to d5, Wesley didn't go for this. He played queen to e8, and now uh, Magnus goes queen to c3. We have knight to d7 now. Uh, and uh, after knight to d7, pawn to f3. Uh, pawn to f3 with the idea of opening up the f-file. If g captures on f3, even rook to f1. And now you have captures on g2, rook f7, and you are just um, uh, lost here. Queen f3, queen h5, there is no stopping checkmate here. So after f3, we have queen to a8, now doubling up on the a-file again. And now knight to f7 with check, and uh, there's nothing uh, Wesley can do here. Here, uh, the problem is after this queen to a8 move, there is no, no going back. Here you have to play something like g captures on f3, or bishop captures on d5, but after this queen to a8 move, there are just so many moves that win the game for Magnus. Uh, knight to f7 check is just the most forcing one, uh, because you see what's happening. Uh, look at this, knight captures on c7 is impossible because bishop covers c7, but now you just remove the defender of the c7 pawn. Knight f7 check, king g8, knight captures on d6, c captures, and knight to c7. Attacks the queen and the rook, and yes, Wesley does have the uh, rook a3 freeing idea, uh, but it doesn't matter because Magnus just plays queen to c1. Uh, with Wesley's queen still hanging, and queen to g5 check incoming. So queen to a5, uh, queen to d8 is a little bit better because it stops queen g5, uh, but then you blunder the rook here, uh, but if you want to save the rook, then you just run into a forced checkmate. It's actually a forced mate in 10 here, even though Magnus doesn't go for it, but I will show it. Queen to g5 with check, and now after king to f8, uh, Magnus played knight to e6 check, but the forcing line is queen to d8 check, king to f7, queen to e8 check, king f6, queen e6 check, king to g7, 
queen to e7 check and now finally after king to g6 knight e6 with queen to g7 checkmate as the pawns nicely cover all of these squares but after king f8 knight to e6 check was played uh, okay king to f7 knight to d8 check king to f8 and now knight captures and c6 b captures and now rook to b7 and it was in this position on move 39 that wesley so resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here there's no way to defend the knight you can't play queen to d8 the, the queen covers that square uh, you can't move the knight otherwise you just get checkmated and if you defend the knight with your king you still get checkmated queen g8 check king e7 queen to g7 check king e6 and now queen captures on d7 check king f6 and queen the d6 is checkmate as the pawns once again cover the uh, f5 and g g5 squares so yeah, after rook, uh, rook b7, Wesley resigned and a very nice win for Magnus Carlsen in the third game of their match. Game four ended in a draw, which means that with one uh, win uh, out of four games, Magnus wins his match against Wesley. So uh, we'll see what happens in the next day. We're also going to cover some other games. If you guys have uh, any of your favorites, do use hashtag suggestion and uh, I will go over your comments. Um, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Jonathan Bradley, Christopher Norris, Mokosoft, uh, Michael Arboy, and Fernando. Fernando Gibson for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of this wonderful event uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.